Alright, so the topic for today's video will be At what age did Muhammad marry Aisha and did Muhammad have intercourse with Aisha while she was still prepubescent? This video will have two sections, the first about the age of Aisha when she married Muhammad and whether she was prepubescent when the marriage was consummated, and the second part of the video will be refutations of the strongest Muslim arguments used to defend Muhammad and his marriage slash consummation with Aisha. So before diving into the Islamic sources, something to take note of is that in Islam, once a child reaches puberty, they are considered an adult. This will be important to remember when going through some of the Muslim sources and Muslim arguments. Alright, so firstly we will take a look at some of the hadiths that mention the age of Aisha when she was married to Muhammad and when Muhammad consummated his marriage with Aisha. Sahih al-Buhari, 5133 Narrated Aisha that the Prophet married her when she was 6 years old and he consummated his marriage when she was 9 years old and she remained with him for 9 years. We see the same thing in Sahih al-Buhari, 5134 Narrated Aisha that the Prophet married her when she was 6 years old and he consummated his marriage when she was 9 years old. And again we see this in Sahih al-Buhari 5158. Narrated Ura, the Prophet wrote the marriage contract with Aisha while she was 6 years old and consummated his marriage with her while she was 9 years old and she remained with him for 9 years. And we continue to see that Muhammad married Aisha while she was 6 and consummated the marriage when she was 9 throughout the Hadith. We see it in Sahih Muslim 1422a, Sahih Muslim 1422b, Sahih Muslim 1422c, Sahih Muslim 1422d, Sahih al Buhari 3896, and Sunan An Nasai 3379. So, from the hadith, we can see that it is very clear that Muhammad married Aisha when she was six and consummated the marriage when she was nine. But the question is, was she prepubescent when Muhammad consummated the marriage? To get the answer, let's take a look at some more hadith. Sahih al Buhari 6130. Narrated Aisha, I used to play with the dolls in the presence of the Prophet, and my girlfriends also used to play with me. When Allah's Messenger used to enter my dwelling place, they used to hide themselves, but the Prophet would call them to join and play with me. The playing with the dolls and similar images is forbidden, but it was allowed for Aisha at the time as she was a little girl, not yet reached the age of puberty. So we can see from this hadith that Aisha was still playing with dolls when Muhammad would come and have sex with her and she was allowed to play with dolls as she was still a prepubescent child. Now the Muslim defense for this hadith is that the part where it says the playing with the dolls and similar images is forbidden but allowed for Aisha at the time as she was a little girl not yet reached the age of puberty was not originally there in the hadith. It was a later addition from a hadith commentary. This is true but we should also take a look at why this commentary was added onto the hadith. The reason it was added is because playing with dolls is forbidden in Islam. This is because dolls are images. So when the scholar saw or heard a hadith saying that Aisha was playing with dolls while being in the presence of Muhammad, the scholar added the explanation so that we can know that the only reason Aisha was allowed to play with the dolls is because she had not reached puberty yet and only children in Islam are allowed to play with dolls. So because of the addition to the hadith, readers will know that Aisha was following Islamic teachings and Muhammad was ensuring that she followed it by only allowing her to play with dolls because she was still a child, not reached the age of puberty. So we can conclude from this hadith that Muhammad had sex with Aisha while she was still prepubescent. Now I'll show some other hadith that report that Aisha was still playing with dolls when the marriage was consummated. Sunan An-Nasai 3378 Narrated Aisha The Messenger of Allah married me when I was 6 and consummated the marriage with me when I was 9 and I used to play with dolls. We see this again in Sahih Muslim 1422c. Aisha reported that Allah's apostle married her when she was 7 years old and she was taken to his house as a bride when she was 9 and her dolls were with her. We also see this in Sahih Muslim 2440a. Aisha reported that she used to play with dolls in the presence of Allah's messenger and when her playmates came to her they left the house because they felt shy of Allah's messenger whereas Allah's messenger sent them to her. Again we see this in Sunan Abu Dawud 4931. Aisha said, I used to play with dolls. Sometimes the messenger of Allah entered upon me when the girls were with me. When he came in, they went out. And when he went out, they came in. And finally in Sunan Abu Dawud 4932, we also see that Aisha still had dolls even when she was married and had consummated her marriage with Muhammad. Narrated Aisha, 
When the Messenger of Allah arrived after the expedition at Tabuk al Kaiba, the draught raised an end of the curtain, which was hung from the front of her storeroom, revealing some dolls which belonged to her. He asked, What is this? She replied, My dolls. Among them he saw a horse with wings made of rags and asked, What is this I see among them? She replied, A horse. He asked, What is this that it has on it? She replied, Two wings. He asked, A horse with two wings? She replied, Have you not heard that Solomon had horses with wings? She said, Thereupon the messenger of Allah laughed so heartedly that I could see his molar teeth. So from these hadith, it is clear that Muhammad married and had intercourse with Aisha when she was still playing with dolls. This confirms that Aisha was prepubescent, as having and playing with dolls is not allowed in Islam unless you are still a child that has not reached puberty. Now we'll move on to the rebuttal section of the video, where I refute the strongest Muslim arguments that try to justify Muhammad having sex with a 9 year old prepubescent girl. Here is a list of the arguments that we will be refuting. Number 1. Playing with dolls can be done as an adult too. Number 2. Muhammad made an exception for Aisha by allowing her to play with dolls even after she reached puberty. Number 3. Muhammad waited 3 years for Aisha to reach puberty before consummating the marriage. Number 4. The hadith shows that Aisha reached puberty at 9. Number 5. Aisha said in a hadith that I had seen my parents following Islam since I attained the age of puberty. Number 6. Girls reach puberty quicker due to the hot climate of the Arabian desert. Number 7. Once a girl has menstruated, she is considered an adult ready for intercourse slash pregnancy. Number 8. Muhammad's marriage to Aisha was acceptable since, in that culture, girls often married at a young age. Number 9. The fallacy of presentism. Number 10. Aisha was 19 or 18 when Muhammad consummated the marriage. Number 11. People would die early so they would have to start families and get married at a much younger age. The first argument I'll address is the argument that it was not uncommon for young women in the past to own and even play with dolls. Some Muslims will argue that even adults in today's society will play games just as a child does. And yes, it's true that adults can play games just as a child does in today's society or even back then. But the difference is that in Islam it's forbidden to play with dolls unless you're a prepubescent kid. And seeing that Aisha was married to Muhammad, he knew the rules about how dolls are forbidden images and are only allowed for prepubescent children. So if Aisha was considered an adult by attaining puberty, Muhammad, the perfect Muslim, an example for all mankind, would have forbidden her from playing with dolls, as it is against Islamic ruling for adults to play with dolls and have them. Therefore, under Islamic ruling, adults and teenagers are not allowed to play with dolls too. The next argument I'll address is that Muhammad made an exception for Aisha by allowing her to play with dolls even after she reached puberty. There is no evidence that Muhammad made an exception for Aisha to play with dolls even after reaching puberty. This is just wishful thinking, and ultimately this point will backfire on the Muslim who uses it. This is because it makes Muhammad the perfect example for Muslims to follow, a person who did not follow Sharia law made by Allah. Unless Allah made a clear exception for Aisha to continue playing with dolls, he would have followed the rules and stopped her from playing with them once she reached puberty. To say otherwise makes Muhammad a person who could not follow the law, making him a bad example for Muslims to follow. Now I will address the argument that Muhammad waited three years so that Aisha could reach puberty before consummating the marriage. The problem with this argument is that there is no evidence for this claim. Instead, when reading the Muslim sources, I only see evidence that Muhammad waited three years so Aisha could grow her hair back after getting sick. This is explained in Sahih Abu Hari 3894. Narrated Aisha The Prophet engaged me when I was a girl of six years. We went to Medina and stayed at the home of Bani al Harith bin Kazraj. Then I got ill and my hair fell down. Later on my hair grew again, and my mother, Umm Rahman, came to me while I was playing in the swing with some of my girlfriends. She called me, and I went to her, not knowing what she wanted me to do. She caught me by the hand and made me stand at the door of the house. I was breathless then, and when my breathing became alright, she took some water and rubbed my face and head with it. Then she took me into the house. There in the house I saw some Ansari woman who said, Best wishes and Allah's blessing and good luck. Then she entrusted me to them, and they prepared me for the marriage. Unexpectedly, Allah's apostle came to me in the forenoon, and my mother handed me over to him. 
and at that time, I was a girl of 9 years of age. So from this hadith, we can see that after the pilgrimage to Medina, Aisha got sick and her hair fell down. Later on, her hair grew back, and that's when Muhammad consummated the marriage. Additionally, in Sunan Abu Dawud 4935, we learn that Aisha was in Medina when she was playing on a swing and her hair came to around her ears, and that's when Muhammad consummated the marriage with her when she was nine. So from this, we can see that the claim that Muhammad waited three years for Aisha to reach puberty before consummating the marriage just has no historical evidence or backing. However, there is evidence that Muhammad waited three years for Aisha to grow her hair back after she fell ill. The next argument I'll address is that the Hadith show that Aisha reached puberty at the age of nine and that's when Muhammad consummated the marriage. This is found in Sunan Abu Dawud 4933. Narrated Aisha, the Messenger of Allah married me when I was seven or six, when we came to Medina. Some woman came. According to Bishra's version, Umm Ruman came to me when I was swinging. They took me, made me prepared, and decorated me. I was then brought to the Messenger of Allah, and he took up cohabation with me when I was nine. She halted me at the door, and I burst into laughter. Abu Dawood said, this is to say that I menstruated, and I was brought in a house. And there were some women of the Ansari in it. They said, with good luck and blessing. The tradition of one of them has been included in the other. Now the problem with Muslims using this hadith as evidence that Aisha reached puberty before Muhammad consummated his marriage with her is that the part where it says Aisha menstruated and was then brought into the house to consummate the marriage was not there in the original narration by Aisha. As you can see, Abu Dawood added it on to the report of the hadith. Abu Dawood lived about 200 years after Aisha and was not a witness to what happened at the time of the report. I also do not see a logical reason he made the addition to the hadith considering that there is no solid evidence from any other sources that say she reached puberty before the consummation of the marriage. If this addition to the hadith is true, then it shows that there is large contradictions across the Sahih hadith, with Abu Dawood saying that she menstruated before the consummation of the marriage, and Bukhari showing that Aisha was a 9 year old prepubescent girl who was playing with dolls when the marriage was consummated. Both can't be true but both are Sahih. In cases like this, we should go with Bukhari, because Bukhari is the most authentic hadith collection that we have, whereas Abu Dawood is seen as not as authentic as Bukhari. So we should go with Bukhari saying that Aisha was a 9 year old prepubescent girl playing with dolls when the marriage was consummated as it is more authentic than Abu Dawood saying she menstruated before the consummation of the marriage. Now we'll take a look at another hadith that As Abdullah and Jonathan Brown use in their article, link will be in the description, to defend Muhammad to say that he consummated the marriage with Aisha once she reached puberty. The hadith that they use to defend Muhammad is Sahih al Buhari 476. Narrated Aisha, I had seen my parents following Islam since I attained the age of puberty. Not a day passed but the Prophet visited us both in the mornings and evenings. My father Abu Bakr thought of building a mosque in the courtyard of his house, and he did so. He used to pray and recite the Quran in it. The pagan women and their children used to stand up by him and look at him with surprise. Abu Bakr was a soft-hearted person and could not help weeping while reciting the Quran. The chiefs of the Quraysh pagans became afraid of that, i.e. that their children and women might be affected by the recitation of the Quran. Now I'll leave the article on the screen so you can pause the video and read through what they said. But to summarize what As Abdullah and Jonathan are saying by using this hadith is that Aisha reached puberty when she was 9 in 622 after the migration of Muslims to Medina from Mecca. Once she had reached puberty, she realized her parents were Muslims practicing Islam, and during that time Muhammad consummated his marriage with her. Now I'll show you why the Hadith Sahih al-Buhari 476 cannot be historically true. I'll also show that even if Aisha reached puberty before Muhammad consummated the marriage with her, that does not mean it's okay to go and have intercourse with her, as there can be disastrous effects on young girls who get pregnant. Alright, so here is a timeline of the events that occurred relevant to the Hadith. During 610 to 612, Muhammad preached Islam to his close friends and relatives. During these three years, Abu Bakr was one of the first people that converted to Islam. In 613, Muhammad began to preach Islam publicly. Then we have Aisha, the daughter of Abu Bakr, who was born in 614. Also in 614, the heavy persecution of the Muslim community begins. 
In 617, Muhammad marries Aisha. Then in 622, the Muslims migrate from Mecca to Medina. Shortly after the migration to Medina, Muhammad consummates his marriage with Aisha. So now let's go back to the arguments that As Abdullah and Dr. Jonathan Brown made in their article. They are saying that after the migration to Medina in 622, Aisha reached puberty and that is when she realized her parents were Muslims. Now this makes no sense. Abu Bakr was one of the first people who became a Muslim between 610 and 612. Abu Bakr became a Muslim before 614, the year that Aisha was born in. So what As Abdullah and Dr. Jonathan Brown are claiming in their article is that for 9 years of her life, Aisha did not recognize that she was a Muslim or her parents were Muslim, even though her parents would have been practicing Muslims all throughout her childhood and would have raised her as a Muslim. Additionally, during the time 610 to 622, before the migration to Medina, all the Medean Quran chapters were being revealed to Muhammad. Muhammad was also preaching Islam publicly in Mecca during 613 to 622. During the time Muhammad was preaching in Mecca, the Muslims were supposedly a persecuted people, and this is one of the reasons the Muslims had to migrate to Medina in 622. Despite this, As Abdullah and Dr. Jonathan Brown are claiming that Aisha was oblivious to the persecution of Muslims during 613 to 622 in Mecca, and she was oblivious to the whole reason the Muslim community fled to Medina in 622. Moreover, we also have the claim from As Abdullah and Dr. Jonathan Brown that after the migration to Medina in 622, Aisha reached puberty as a 9 year old and that's when Muhammad consummated his marriage with her. This claim could have been true, however, when we look at the previous hadith we saw, Aisha was a prepubescent girl when Muhammad consummated his marriage with her and she still played with dolls. For argument's sake, let's say she did reach puberty at the age of 9. This does not mean she's ready for intercourse or to have babies. Puberty is a process that can take several years. If a girl who has just had her first menstruation gets pregnant, her hips are not wide enough and her birth canal is not wide enough for the baby. Also, having sex as soon as a girl hits puberty can cause her to label for days and many girls die during this process. I will go into greater detail about the negative effects that pregnancy has on girls who are too young later on in the video. But as you can see, Sahih al-Buhari 476 cannot be historically true as Aisha would have known her parents were Muslims considering they became Muslims sometime before she was born and would have raised her as a Muslim. Hence, she would have known her parents' faith well before she reached the age of puberty. And even if she did reach puberty at the age of 9, this does not mean she's ready for intercourse or pregnancy as this can result in girls dying. Now we'll take a look at the argument that girls at the time reached puberty faster due to the hot climate and the Arabian desert. There is no evidence for this argument that girls were reaching puberty faster due to the hot climate of the Arabian desert. From the research that I did, I have seen majority of girls throughout history started puberty around 11 to 13, and that's still the same today. Now puberty can start earlier or later for children at different time periods. And there is of course outliers who may start puberty at much earlier ages than regular children. But for the majority of children, puberty will start at around 11 to 13. Alright, now let's take a look at the argument that once a girl has menstruated, she is considered an adult and she is ready for intercourse and pregnancy. For starters, Aisha had not reached puberty when Muhammad consummated his marriage with her. Now just for argument's sake, let's say she did reach puberty. When a girl gets her first period, this is not a sign that she's ready for childbirth. Doctors say that when a girl gets her first period, it is the beginning of puberty. It is not a sign that she's ready for childbirth. It is a sign that a change is happening in her, and several years down the line, these changes in her body will allow her to give birth. Puberty is a process that takes several years. It's not a sign that a girl is ready for sex and pregnancy. Girls who have just reached puberty are not ready for childbirth, as their hips and birth canals are not wide enough for the baby and this widening process can take several years. The girl's pelvic floor also isn't developed enough at this time. Some negative effects of young pregnancy for the girls are, the girls can go and labor for days and die. The women and girls who do survive often develop fistula, which are holes between the vaginal wall and the rectum or bladder. When the baby's head pushes down and gets stuck, it can cut portions of the mother's soft tissue between the skull and her pelvic bones. As a result, the tissue dies and the hole forms. Feces and urine can then leak through the hole and out of the vagina. Women with fistula are often divorced or shunned and young girls are at a higher risk of developing it. 
so it's clear that girls are not ready for intercourse or pregnancy just because they have had their first menstrual cycle. For more information on the dangers of early pregnancy, I'll leave a link to an article in the description, and the article goes through the negative effects that young pregnancy can have on a mother. Now we'll take a look at the argument that Muhammad's marriage to Aisha was acceptable, since in that day and culture, girls often got married at a young age. Even if culturally speaking, girls got married at a young age, Muhammad is the perfect example for all mankind for all time. And if you're a Muslim, Muhammad is the pattern of conduct, and you were meant to follow what he did in his life, and live the way he did, and make life decisions based on how Muhammad acted. So his moralistic behavior should transcend cultures, and be seen as excellent no matter how far morals develop in different cultures or over time. So because Muhammad married and had intercourse with young prepubescent girls, Muslims living in times and cultures after Muhammad will also be able to justify marrying and having sex with a young prepubescent girl, because that's what Muhammad did, as he is the example for mankind for all time. So to argue that it is acceptable for Muhammad to marry Aisha as a young girl is not good enough, because Muhammad's example to Muslims is for all time, and Muslims in later cultures can justify marrying and having intercourse with a young prepubescent girl, even if that culture frowns upon it, because that's what Muhammad did. Another point that I would like to add is that according to Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, right and wrong is ordained by Almighty God. As such, morals do not change over time based on our whims, desires, or cultural sensitivities. Some examples of Allah having morals beyond cultural norms is shown with Muhammad forbidding female infanticide, the killing of female babies, which was common in the culture that Muhammad was raised in. Sodom and Gomorrah were also destroyed for their sexual sin. In Sodom and Gomorrah, sexual sin was prevalent and it was normal, but still, Allah destroyed it. These are just two examples, but it shows that Allah judged not based on what people thought was culturally normal at the time, but based on the moral absolutes ordained by God. Now we move on to the fallacy of presentism. I'll let Muhammad Hijab explain what this argument is. The fallacy of presentism is using present ideas of the 21st century narrative to try and actually disprove other things which are moral based. Um, well, that's actually anachronistic. In other words, you're using a present idea to superimpose it on, a, let's say, a previous society or whatever it is. But that doesn't show that your idea is true and their idea is false. Mm -hmm. It just shows that you, you have a value judgment, a subjective aesthetic value judgment, which happens to differ from that which existed pre, uh, beforehand. Now, this argument would only be true if Islam came for a certain culture and time period. However, as we know, Islam came for all time, and Muhammad was the final messenger from Allah, and the perfect example for all mankind for all time. Therefore, there will be no adapting Islamic ideology and laws to fit in with new cultural and societal norms, because what Allah and Muhammad made permissible and forbidden will stay that way, no matter if a society views it as a cultural norm. And as I said before, right and wrong are ordained by Almighty God. As such, morality does not change over time, based on our whims, desires, or cultural sensitivities. Now I'll look at the argument that Aisha was 19 or 18 when Muhammad consummated the marriage. This argument falls flat, because the hadith are clear, she was 6 when she was married to Muhammad and 9 when the consummation happened. Aisha herself is the one reporting them. So to say different from what the hadith say, is to say Aisha is a liar. Now I'll take a look at the argument that people died early back then, so starting a family and having babies at much earlier ages was normal. The claim made by Muslims is that if you knew you wouldn't live beyond your 30s and most of your children would die in infancy, wouldn't you change your life plans dramatically? Wouldn't you start a family and get married much earlier? The problem with this argument is that there is no evidence that most people were dying in their 30s. The average life expectancy in 7th century Arabia was 35 plus, and that's pretty good for 7th century Arabia. Having an average life expectancy of 35 plus does not mean majority of people were dying after 35. A healthy person at the time could live into their 60s or 70s. Several factors go into the calculation of a 35 plus life expectancy, such as child and infant deaths, deaths through wars, death through diseases, and much more. These are lowering their average life expectancy. To get an idea of how life expectancy works and how the life expectancy average is calculated, I'll leave a link in the description so you can click it and watch the video on it. Additionally, a scholar in 7th century Arabia could live up to 59 to 84.3 years old, this showing that many people would survive to an old age. 
So for your average healthy person, they would die around their 50s all the way to their 80s. So people weren't all dying in their 30s like Muslims claim. And therefore, people would have had plenty of time to get married and start a family, and they wouldn't have had to do this when they were 9 years old or 6 years old. So in conclusion, from the Hadith we see that Muhammad married Aisha when she was 6, and he consummated the marriage when she was a 9 year old prepubescent girl. Aisha still played with dolls when Muhammad consummated the marriage, confirming that she was still prepubescent, as dolls are forbidden in Islam unless you're a prepubescent child. There is no evidence that Muhammad waited three years to consummate the marriage with Aisha so that she could reach puberty. The Hadith Muslims used to show that Aisha reached puberty at the age of nine when Muhammad consummated the marriage with her does not actually say this in the original narration. The other Hadith Muslims used to defend Muhammad having intercourse with Aisha when she was nine is just historically inaccurate. There is no real evidence that girls in 7th century Arabia reached puberty quicker, and even if they did, just because a girl has reached puberty this does not mean she's ready for intercourse or pregnancy, as this can cause the girl to die or develop fistulas. Additionally, due to God ordaining what is right and wrong, moral laws do not change over time based on our whims, desires or cultural sensitivities. The fallacy of presentism does not hold up because Islam and Muhammad's example came for all time. And it was not normal for people to die in their 30s in 7th century Arabia, so people had plenty of time to start families after they had fully developed. So was Aisha prepubescent when Muhammad had sex with her? Yes, yes she was. And even if she had reached puberty, it does not make her ready for intercourse or pregnancy. Well that's it for today guys. You can feel free to download this video, upload it to your monetized channels and use it however you want. Thanks for watching, I'll see you guys in the next one.